Friday, April 28th, 2023, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at why, in my opinion, CBDCs are dead on arrival. Yes, dead on arrival. And uh, what's going to be the alternative? Well, the alternative is going to be uh, money, gold and silver. Yes, gold and silver. And before I start, just like to uh, comment a little bit on what Tucker Carlson said a couple of days ago. Uh, he made an address just over two minutes. Um, and uh, I'd never thought of it uh, like this when I started my channel uh, back in 2016 or late 2015. Yes, <laughs> the, the things that I have try to expose like uh, the uh, fraudulent nature of our monetary, well, it's not even a monetary system, but yeah, our monetary and financial system, the derivatives. I, I, I thought, <laughs> who's going to watch this? Is it going to grow? Are people wanting to hear this? But I've been talking about it even before I started my channel, even back when I worked in the city of London, when I started looking into things. Um, it's all about the truth and what he said, Tucker Carlson, that resonated with me. And I thought, wow, this is what I've been doing. He said, when honest uh, people uh, say the truth uh, without being embarrassed in a calmly way, they become powerful. <laughs> I never thought of that. And uh, yes, <laughs> I might sound like a broken record a lot of times, but it's just because it's the truth. Gold is money, silver is money, and has been for thousands of years. And what we have today, fiat currency, always goes to zero, always creates trouble. And we're seeing it now. It's all coming to a head. We've got too much debt. Uh, the economies are stagnant. We got huge inequality. <laughs> uh, there's an article yesterday on uh, in the FT about how luxury goods have become such a huge thing. The biggest company in Europe is Louis Vuitton, Moet, Hennessy, LVMH, worth over $500 billion. We have all the symptoms. Uh, we've got societal uh, divisiveness. And like back, I think it was the, during the Byzantium. Some people think it's during the Roman uh, Roman times, but I think it was the East Roman Empire before the fall of Byzantium. They were discussing whether uh, a saint should be uh, masculine or feminine. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the Ottomans took over, of course, uh, Istanbul or Constantinople in 1453. That's what was going on. And today we have the same things going on. So I thought that was very interesting what he said. So let's just listen to what he said here. He's, this is what he said. But it won't work. When honest people say what's true, calmly and without embarrassment, they become powerful. At the same time... The so there you go. Um, that's what I've been trying to do these last, uh, well, seven years uh, on this channel. Uh, calmly, <laughs> uh, just as if I was talking to a good friend or to a family member. And uh, hopefully I have helped you uh, with the way you see things. I I'm not here to try to tell you how to become rich or uh, do anything like that. I'm trying to help you understand the financial monetary system. And with that, you're supposed to do your own uh, research, due diligence. You not might accept what I say, and that's fine. Everyone should be able to have their own opinion, and that's what it's all about. And uh, there you go. So <laughs> back to uh, the topic of CBDCs, central bank digital currencies. And, and it's been a, a hot topic for the last nine months, maybe six months. The uh, central banks have been coming out with their white papers or working papers. Bank of England came out in February. 
Uh, there's talk that the Fed's going to launch something in July. The Fed has come out and denied that it's anything to do with CBDCs. Uh, we've seen um, the BIS, the Bank for International Settlements, the uh, Bank for the Central Bankers. Uh, they're pushing a CBDC. We, we've seen its managing director, Augustin Karsten, come out and say that it will be a, a lot easier to control things. But the way things are going, uh, the way uh, the truth is coming out, hopefully, and the truth always comes out. It might take a long time, but it, it will. And uh, I'll go back to uh, 1972. And as you've known, I've uh, referenced this many times. Even a former central banker came out and said, our uh, system now is I owe you nothings, currencies. It's not real money. That was John Exter, of course. So nothing's changed since 1972. Will the BRICS be an option, the BRICS currency? I don't know. Will they learn? I'm not too sure. To all empires, they, they wouldn't have been able to function without this. This is what people accept as money. And do we really need money? Well, that's the other question you need to ask. Because what's money? Well, money is just uh, the most marketable commodity. It's the one that everyone desires or everyone will take in exchange for any good or any service. And it facilitates indirect exchange. It facilitates specialization. And that's why our modern day industrial economy is, uh, well, that's why we live so much better off than people did 200 or 300 years ago. Uh, we have a better standard of living than kings or, or queens did 200, 250 years ago uh, because of that. And that's why it's so important. But uh, since 1971, of course, this uh, power of the currency of money has been abused, has been trampled on. And I'm afraid what's going on now is the culmination, the end of this non-system. So my question to you is, <laughs> the people who have run the system for the last 50 odd years since 1971, and that is the central bankers and the economists that congregate around them, the Keynesians, some of them call themselves free market, but they're anything but. Yeah, just have a look at the Communist Manifesto. <laughs> One of the 10 planks of that is centralized credit or a central bank. Do we want to keep going down that way? So what I'm trying to say, why should we accept a solution from the people who brought us the problem of this uh, fiat currency nightmare that we're, we're going to continue to experience? Yes, a lot of people are going to give a lot loads of excuses, uh, especially the Bank of England. That's what I wanted to jump on, jump, jump to right now, because Uh, publications like the Daily Telegraph, and I don't really trust the mainstream, but uh, sometimes they come out with the truth. Uh, this guy here, Ben Marlowe, chief city commentator, he's almost sounding like me. But I've been <laughs> saying this for over 20 years, and especially here on this channel for the last seven years, and it's finally starting to seep through into the uh, public uh, conscience and uh, that's my hope that people see that this is uh, not just the people in there that are corrupt, inept, and clueless, but the institution itself. He didn't go as far as to say, uh, Ben Marlowe, in this article, that we should abolish the Bank of England. And how do you do that? Well, Bank of England was created by a royal charter back in 1694. So the only way to <laughs> to end it would be to revoke that charter. It would be very easy, but 
anyway, let's just go through this quickly. It says it's official Brit Britain's shameless elite just put the final nail in their own coffin. Well, who's the elite? Well, it, it's the city of London bankers and the Bank of England is at the top of that because the Bank of England is controlled by the, the bankers in the city. And uh, that's a start. <laughs> uh, they put the final nail in their co own coffin. The hapless Bank of England should offer a full apology to the British people. Well, I don't think an apology would do. <laughs> uh, I think uh, revoking that royal charter would be the best thing. But um, let's just quickly go through this. Uh, some pills are harder to swallow than others, uh, especially during the cost of living crisis, but they don't come any more bitter than uh, the one dished out by the Bank of England after its chief economist was regrettably allowed off the leash. In an interview that will surely go down as one of the most tin-eared uh, that an establishment figure has ever conducted, Hugh Pill, a, a man who earns nearly six times more than the average person, has declared that we should all accept being poorer Is it at this point, surely, that any shred of integrity that, that the central bank may have had left has been eviscerated, possibly forever, given the frequency with which the once venerable institution keeps serving up the howlers? I would say once venerable, you could use that for the period from 1820 to 1914. That was a period where actually the Bank of England uh, and our system was on a sound footing, gold and silver. Preferably, uh, there won't be a venerable institution soon, but let's continue. It's becoming difficult to keep track, incredibly, as if further proof were needed that the Bank of England is completely out of touch with ordinary people. Pill wasn't the only one embarrassing himself in public. So this is just this uh, mentality. Uh, the Keynesians have got it wrong. They, they thought that uh, you could defeat inflation by creating more inflation through a fiat currency system, through printing money that there wouldn't be inflation. And this goes back to uh, the point that I always try to make that inflation is not rising prices. Inflation is the creation of currency and credit out of thin air, not backed by money. And uh, it's a truth. Across town or possibly in the room next door from where uh, Pill was speaking on a Columbia University podcast, Deputy Governor Ben Broadbent was peddling the now utterly tiresome line that the bank couldn't have done anything about inflation, even if it had raised interest rates sooner. Well, the Bank of Mexico and the Central Bank of Brazil did. They started raising rates in early 2021. Their rates now are percentage, many percentages above their rate of inflation, and they've been able to bring it down. Um, so not an excuse there. And there are others <laughs> giving out excuses. The spectacle of not one, but two central bankers making fool, fools of themselves in this way leaves the bank with no possible route uh, back to pre uh, credibility. So if the bank has no credibility, why should we trust it? Uh, with a central bank digital currency. They can't even run a fiat currency because that's what the Bank of England is supposed to do. Uh, the banknotes that we use, <laughs> if you look at them, it says Bank of England, a promissory note. Of course, it's a promissory note for nothing, and that's the whole problem, of course. Pill's remarks have rightly caused the most anger, provoking a backlash from across the political divide. At a time when new figures from the Trussell Trust charity reveal that 3 million struggling families turn to emergency 
food parcels last year, one million of them child for children. The comments will be seen as deep, deeply insensitive, coming from a man who earns 190,000 pounds a year. Uh, they are particularly crass. Um, the interesting thing he says here, though, is that they're also trying to uh, blame people for retiring early. I think that was Andrew Bailey for inflation. Uh, and the uh, interesting thing that he said here, and this is coming back to, to what I said or what I've been saying since 2008. Yes, they've been able to keep the inflation from flowing into basic necessities. Uh, they were able to keep it flowing into financial assets, to real estate. But now that's all over. So this is what he says here that resonates with me as well. The bank spent a decade pouring petrol on asset prices by holding interest rates too low for too long while sim simultaneously printing vast quantities of money, especially during the pandemic, when its bond buying program came within a, a whisker of touching an astonishing 900 billion pounds. Bailey rejects the suggestion that quantitative easing has fueled the rapid rise in inflation. Yet a panel of esteemed economists recently told the Parliamentary Select Committee of MPs that it has Former government Lord King has said the same. Well, I'm sorry to say this to Lord King, but he's part of the problem as well. Um, even though I've tried to get him to interview, um, he kept uh, the base rate below the rate of inflation. Yeah, up until 2013 for four years, we had negative real rates and we still have it today. <laughs> and... Uh, Yes, so that's why I think CBDCs are dead on arrival, at least here in the UK. Um, and hopefully people will wake up to this uh, and wake up their friends, families, and all others uh, around their tight-knit, let's say, community. And uh, what's interesting, though, that a lot of people don't even know about CBDCs, that it's that they're trying to bring it on. So please make sure you share this video. Yeah, and like Tucker said, don't be embarrassed or afraid to tell them the truth and do it calmly. Um, and uh, that's what I'm gonna keep trying to do here. So um, you might be asking, where's Rudy? Well, he's fine, we've been for a walk, but he was playing and he was too excited to come on the sofa. So I left him in the uh, in the other part of the house. So we're going to look at the markets this morning. Uh, it's 8.24 a.m. London time. It was an interesting day yesterday. We had the GDP numbers. They're very weak. I think 1% uh, growth. And if you uh, account for the deficits that they're running, which, is, which are really near 10% of GDP, uh, if you strip out all the extra government spending, GDP would be negative. So the question of whether we're in a recession is irrelevant. I think we already are. And we were last year. The first two quarters last year in the U.S. were negative. So it was a weird day because uh, bond markets dropped, bond, bond prices, yields went up quite a bit. And yet the stock market had a big day. Uh, I think the Dow is up about 2%. So, so were the other indices. And gold and silver were kept in check. Yes, it's frustrating. But one day, uh, as Jim Sinclair said, gold uh, will be a revealer of true wealth, I would say. And again, I'm not trying to tell you that to buy gold, you're going to become rich. What it will do, it will uh, maintain the value of your savings. So it means you won't become poor, I think. <laughs> That's what, what it is. Uh, so there we go. Um, we've got spot gold anyway at 1984. It's down about just over three dollars. Range has been 92 to 81. So gold just 
Yeah, trading north and south of 2000 at the moment. Silver the same with the 25 level. We're unchanged at 24.92 here in silver. High's been 03, low 83. Uh, the Dow futures is down 91 points. NASDAQ down 34. S&P is down 12. To the currencies, we got sterling down 0.2 of a percent at 124.75. The euro is down a quarter of a percent at 110.02. Uh, the dollar is up significantly versus the yen here. It's up 1.3% at 135.72. So the new uh, BOJ governor, uh, it's reported here on, on Reuters that uh, he's going to keep ultra low rates. <laughs> so there you go. Um, the uh, Japanese, <laughs> they can't get out of this uh, money printing of this QE. And eventually, of course, the people who are going to suffer are going to be the general public in Japan. And we can see here by the chart of uh, gold and yen that the yen is quickly disappearing uh, <laughs> into worthlessness. And it's going to happen here. It's going to happen in the U.S. because that's all that the central bankers, that's all they know how to do. That's the only uh, tool they have uh, is to cut rates to create inflation because that's what it is of course uh, the dollar is uh, unchanged versus the u1 at 693.38 let's check out the uh, dollar versus the Russian currency it's uh, down about 1% at 81 the dollar versus the ruble Aussie dollar is down half a percent at 65.96. Uh, the dollar is up a third of a percent versus the Canadian dollar at 136.40. And the Kiwi dollar is down slightly at 61.38. To the general commodities, uh, we've got uh, WTI crude up 0.2 of a percent, 74.80. Brent is up a quarter of a percent, 78.50. High grade copper is up slightly at 388.50. Platinum is down 12 bucks at 1,071. And just to finish off, we'll quickly uh, look at the uh, bond market. The uh, two year yield is uh, down about five basis points at 404. Uh, the 10 year is at 349. So that's down four basis points as well. Uh, ch check out the uh, UK government bond market, the two-year gilt yield is up uh, one basis points at 382. The 10 years at 380 unchanged. With that, I'm going to wish you all a very good day and a very good weekend. Take care. Bye.